Good evening, good evening. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Carolina Panthers Talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the YouTube of the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. I just wanted to get on here and make a quick video. Um, there was an article that I came across on ESPN.com uh, talking uh, about what's next for the Carolina Panthers after firing Frank Reich. Uh, it was actually an article uh, by Jeremy Fowler and D Dan Graziano. And I kind of wanted to also give my takes on potential uh, prospects of who I would like to see as the next head coach of the Carolina Panthers. So let's let's jump into this article. It was it was very intriguing. It was very intriguing. But yeah, it's on ESPN.com. It was an insider um, story. But the question that was asked is what's the next step for Carolina after firing Frank Wright? Uh, Dan Graziano starts off by saying, and I quote, everything is and must be about Bryce Young. The Panthers are heavily invested in their quarterback and his future success. Jim Caldwell and Thomas Brown are in charge of helping Young finish out his rookie season and ideally show some strides in development. If they can accomplish that, I would think one or both of them would at least get some cursory consideration for the job. But it'll be a wide open coaching search that probably at least leans toward offensive minded candidates given the importance of Young to the future of the organization. Now, I can definitely agree with that. And, you know, Jim Caldwell, who has been a head coach before and, you know, has has done well. I remember when he last was head coach with the Detroit Lions. I felt like he got snubbed, even though the last season um, that he had there was a good one, yet still got fired and replaced by Matt Patricia, who was a much worse coach. So I definitely... I wouldn't be against the idea of Jim Caldwell. My only thing, the only thing that's, you know, kind of kind of makes me worry just a little bit is his age. He is up there in age. So that's the only thing. Um Thomas Brown, I mean I mean this is his first season as offensive coordinator and with him having the play calling back in his hands, I mean, you know, if he can finish strong, I mean I feel like he might be a little too early of a candidate to consider, you know, being that, you know, this is only his one season of being offensive coordinator. But I mean, hey, if he can finish strong, he can he can make a good argument for himself. But, you know, thinking about uh, Jim Caldwell, I wouldn't be totally against that idea of him uh, being a candidate. So. Yeah, I totally get it. Um, building around Bryce Young, I think that's definitely the main priority. Uh, if they want to really get this offense back on track and also really continue to develop Bryce Young, they got to get him weapons. they got to build around him. So I think that's going to be a big, big, high, high priority for this offseason. All right, then Jeremy Fowler uh, speaks and he says and I quote fostering Young's development is paramount but the Panthers must be careful of narrowing the focus too tightly the Panthers were set on getting an offensive minded coach coming into 2023 eschewing the chance to aggressively pursue D'Amico Ryans or embrace interim coach Steve Wilkes who went 6-6 six and six last season Ryans didn't need offensive acumen to flourish in Houston. He hired a good coordinator in Bobby Sholik, Sh Shovik, or Slovik. I keep saying that name wrong. Bobby Slovik to handle that. So my sense is leadership will be a big component here. Someone who can galvanize and inspire that team. All criteria that you want in a coach. The Panthers will need it. That's how dire the situation is right now. 
The Panthers spoke with Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson last cycle. What are the chances they can lure him? Now, Jeremy Fowler makes make some good points here because, you know, as important as, you know, building around Bryce Young is, he specified leadership is going to be a big component in picking a coach. And we need somebody that's going to really lead the charge of that and be a positive example of that. Because, I mean, with the la with how... As much as we talk about quarterback, quarterback carousel, we've had quite a head coach carousel as well. And, you know, with how things went with Matt Rule and with Frank Wright, you know, that's two failures right there. You know, David Tepper doesn't want to keep making the same mistake, although I still think he's, like, one of the main problems. But, you know, as he used D'Amico Ryan's as an example, I mean, defensive-minded guy, but look at how the Texans are doing. The Texans have a great shot at competing for a playoff spot in their division. They got a great chance. And, you know, that would be pretty big for C.J. Stroud, first first year in the NFL, and they, they make the playoffs. That, that would be pretty big. That would be pretty big for them. And, you know, they, they're in a good position. And, you know, they're battling it out with – I believe they're battling it out with um, the the Colts, Jaguars, and Titans. And, I mean, they're not – both teams are not that far behind the Jaguars. I mean, now it's going to be hard to, you know, win the division, but they could sneak into a wild card. They could potentially sneak into a wild card. But – I definitely believe that leadership will be a big deal. And he spoke about Ben Johnson, and that's actually one of my candidates that I would consider, um, offense coordinator Ben Johnson. I don't see why not. He's been a, a big part of helping the Lions, you know, the past season or two, you know, get to where they're at now, especially offensively. So I think someone like Ben Johnson can really, really help out this team especially on the offensive side and you know he's in a position I feel like he can be molded into a head coach same thing with D'Amico Ryans and look like I said look at what he's doing not to mention he went out and got a good offensive coordinator and Bobby Slovic so when you have somebody you know in that type of leadership role that can really go after you know, you know, the right type of coaching staff, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And this team, this organization definitely needs that. But Ben Johnson was mentioned. Why not? I'm totally for him as a candidate. It then goes back to Dan Graziano. He says, and I quote, I think Johnson, as in Ben Johnson, will be a top target but he'll be a top target for a lot of teams. And from his perspective, there might be better and more appealing situations than Carolina. But Jeremy, your point about hiring the overall leader rather than a coach with an offensive background is just so important when we talk about this search and every other coaching search that'll take place this January. Teams really don't pay enough attention to what they're exactly trying to hire and too many teams end up regretting their decisions when they realize they need they need it more than just a play caller facts i i a million percent agree i a million percent agree and you know ben johnson he will be a hot target for sure he'll be a hot target continuing he says and to be clear i'm not saying johnson isn't head coach material he might well be, and plenty of teams have hired hotshot offensive coordinators who turned out to have overall leadership qualities that have shined brightly since they got the big job. Sean McVay and Mike McDaniel stand out as recent examples. Andy Reid is maybe the best example over the past two decades. But my point is we can say the Panthers will be looking for a coach who can shepherd Young's development, 
but we can't lose sight of the fact that there's more to Young's development than just what kind of scheme he's running. We often start with the wrong question here, and Carolina needs a head coach. Capital H, capital C. End quote. Yeah, like, spot on. Spot on. Uh, Mr. Graziano, spot on. I mean, we don't want this to flourish just based on play calling and building up Bryce Young. We need a leader, an overall leader. Because at the same time, it's also important that everything else gets maintained as well. Because you don't want to do all that and then, you know, the defense take, takes a, a big setback. Or special teams takes a big setback. You know what I mean? Like, you want to still have that, that leader, you know, that head coach that can really account for everything under him. Offense, defense, special teams. You know, getting the right type of coaching staff. You know, m making sure that all the pieces are in the right place and that everybody can get as much development and be used to as best to their abilities as possible. So I definitely agree. And those are some good examples there. Sean McVay, Mike McDaniel. I mean, Andy Reid, which Andy Reid, I mean, the dude is very prestigious. I mean, he's been a head coach for a long time and he's done so much in the NFL. You know, so, you know, my my older brother, he's always been a big fan of Andy Reid. I mean, he's a Philadelphia Eagles fan, so I understand. But, you know, it just, it, it says a lot with those examples. And those are great examples to, uh, to follow by. So, I definitely agree. And then Jeremy Fowler uh, ends uh, with this last response. Um, he says, and I quote, Bingo. Dan Campbell is another good one. Of course, the current head coach of the Detroit Lions. He didn't have the offensive um, cachet of others, but has provided viable in that area, along with his leadership. And Carolina's new coach must be skilled at situational football on Sundays. Situational football on Sundays. Uh, wait a minute. Hold, hold on one second. Uh, need, need to refresh this. Hold on one second. I need to refresh this. Okay. Sorry about that. Had to refresh. Um, let me recap. He said, bingo. Dan Campbell is another good one. Lions head coach. He didn't have the offensive cachet of others, but has provided viable in that area, along with his leadership. And Carolina's new coach must be skilled at situational football on Sundays, which a former Panthers head coaching interviewee, Stane Steichen, is showing as Indianapolis coach, going 6-5 and five with a backup quarterback. Out of the 10 to 12 candidates the Panthers will inevitably interview, several will turn out to be good, either in Carolina or somewhere else. It might be worth talking to Michigan's Jim Harbaugh, too, because NFL assistants are off limits for a while, per NFL rules. Carolina could at least see what his vision for the job would be. End quote. Um, at one point, at one point I was considering the idea of Jim Harbaugh, I mean, this was even back before we even hired Frank Reich, you know, but with what he's recently going through, which I believe he is still at Michigan and is going through a suspension right now, uh, oh, it's a three game suspension. Um, against Harbaugh with uh, the whole scandal behind uh, sign stealing. So just with things like that, it doesn't matter who the coach is, but when you when things like that are happening, when it interrupts the integrity of the game, I have an issue with. And that's one of the issues that's really 
keeping me from really going hard to consider Jim Harbaugh as our next head coach. It's just it's it's things like that that rub me the wrong way because it it compromises the integrity of the game. You know what I mean? So same same way of how I felt about uh, head coach Sean Payton. I mean the whole bounty gate. You know it's just things like that that just interfere with the integrity of the game. I just I try to steer clear from. You know what I mean? I understand nobody's perfect, but just certain things like that just you know they kind of stay with me. And you know maybe maybe this is just me, and that's fine. I know others will feel differently, but I don't know when suspect things like that happen it turns me away it, it, it really kind of turns me away it turns me off from consideration but like I said that's just me that's just me now as far as others as far as um, candidates for for head coaches um there's been a lot that's been talked about. Um, I know one that was mentioned, uh, somebody that was interested is former Carolina Panthers tight end or you know now retired, Greg Olson, Mr. Reliable. And it's like I said before, as much as I love Greg Olson, I mean, dude was a heck of a player. I mean, he played in a Super Bowl with us and easily can argue one of the best tight ends to ever play for the Carolina Panthers. But the man has no head coaching experience. And no, no, not really any coaching experience at all. And to be considered for head coach, like first coaching job in the NFL, straight the head coach? Nah. Nah. I have to I have to disagree. I have to disagree. I love Greg Olson, but to bring him in as head coach for Carolina, nah. Especially with how the situation is, I wouldn't do it. I, I don't think that's a smart idea to bring somebody that fresh, that completely fresh into the situation. I know Greg Olson has a history with Carolina, you know, knows, you know, some ins and outs here and there. I don't dispute that but he doesn't have any head coaching experience or any coaching experience. So I have to, I have to say no to Greg Olson. Great player, and I'm glad that he's enjoying being an NFL analyst and a great one, but for head coach, I'm going to have to say no. I know a few people mentioned Steve Smith as well. Same thing. Steve Smith, my favorite Panther of all time. Head coach, though? No. Nah. Wide receiver coach, sure, but straight the head coach, nah, nah. Um, Dan Campbell, I'd be all for. Ben Johnson, I'd be all for. Um, the man at the top of my list, personally, is Eric Bieniemy. He's he's at the top of my list. Now I know there's a great possibility that if Washington lets go of Ron Rivera that they could just easily bump up Eric Bieniemy to head coach. So I think that's a, a possibility. But if they can lure Eric Bieniemy to Carolina, I think that would be really great. See if he can really, um, really help Bryce Young and, you know, just the rest of the team as well. I, I think he's ready. You know, he has yet to be a head coach in the NFL. I think Eric Bieniemy is ready. I really do. And I know a lot of folks say because of, you know, the accusations here and there, you know, why he's not a head coach. And I'm like, honestly, if that's really that big of a deal, why why even have him coach, period? Offensive coordinator, whatever. If it's that big of a deal, why why have him coach at all? You know what I mean? Like, I think it's kind of messed up that oh because of whatever accusations or whatnot oh you can still be an offensive coordinator you just can't be a head coach no nah, I, I think that's bogus I think that's bogus so 
But like I said, just just my opinion on that. Um, I wouldn't mind the idea of Coach uh, Avero Ajaro getting elevated to head coach. You know, he's done a great job with the defense, not only in you know in Carolina, but previously with the uh, not Detroit, Denver. You know, I think he might be one that may could step into that role and do well. Um, I know there were talks about the idea of you think they could get Steve Wilkes back. Honestly, I doubt it. You know, he has it really well over there in San Fran. I don't think he's going to want to come back, especially after, you know, having the opportunity to get elevated after the season and, you know, doing so well and still wasn't enough for them to, for Mr. Tepper to bring him back. I, I'm not so sure if trying to lure him back will will work. He'll probably turn a blind eye to that. But that's just my guess. But I just I don't see it happening. I really don't. Um I would not mind Brian Cal Brian Callahan, uh son of Bill Callahan and also the offensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals, who was part of the offensive staff when the Denver Broncos beat us at Super Bowl fifty. So Brian Callahan, that's a name that I've kind of bounced around a little bit. I think that's somebody I would I would consider for a head coach. I know uh, a lot of people have mentioned Bill O'Brien, which, I mean, the dude did a little something-something as a head coach with the Houston Texans. I mean, after all, had four division titles with the Houston Texans, so, I mean, definitely plenty of playoff experience. Um... And I know some folks would say they would rather just have him like as offensive coordinator or whatnot and not so much head coach. I'm okay with it. I mean, he's he's not my first choice, but I would be okay with the thought of him as, as our head coach as long as he's just the head coach and not trying to be the GM. But, I mean, you know, the dude has a, has a decent head coaching record. And, and like I said, help with the leading of the Houston Texans to four uh, – Division titles. So, I mean, hey, you know, that, that says something. You know, that, that definitely says something. Um, I know somebody even mentioned the idea if Pittsburgh decided to part ways with uh, um, Mike Tomlin. Oh, if that were to ever happen, I, I think that Tepper should throw the biggest bag in the world to Mike Tomlin. I'm sorry. 16 straight season 16 straight winning seasons yeah like that is someone that i would throw money at in a heartbeat to get over to carolina are you kidding me shoot um but yeah those those are some names that really stick out to me um that i think would be good head coaches to consider now, once again, I'm going to go ahead and address this because I know it's going to get brought up, and I know there's talks about this being a consideration, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care how many Coach of the Year awards he has. I don't care how many Super Bowls he has. I don't care what his accolades are. No to Bill Belichick. No. No. Because that, that just shows extreme desperation. I'm sorry, but wanting to consider and be okay with the idea of Bill Belichick as the Carolina Panthers head coach, honestly, I find that equivalent to me making the making a deal with the devil just because he has all the skills and tools to give us instant success that's what that's what I would honestly feel like to me for us to hire Bill Belichick as our head coach not to mention scandals spygate spygate back in 2007 you know, which got fined, 
and they took draft picks away. And like I said, it's another thing compromises the integrity of the game. And the funny thing, funny how that was an issue and that came up two days before the first game of the regular season. And yet that's the same season that they went undefeated up to the Super Bowl. That can't be a coincidence, y'all. That can't be a coincidence. I'm sorry. I, I refuse to believe that's a coincidence. Come on now. Spygate. Everything came through September 7th. First regular season game was against the Jets September 9th, 2007. Look it up. Same season where they went 16-0 and lost to the Giants in the Super Bowl. I'm just saying, like, that says something. Or correct, or actually correction, it was September 9th. So it was right on the day of that first regular season game. Up, oh, right on the day, right on the day. I rest my case. No. No to Bill Belichick. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I wouldn't I wouldn't even go as far as to have him as my head coach in Madden. That that's how much that's how much I, I'm against that idea. Like I said, I literally look at it as equivalent to me making a deal with the devil, you know, who who may have like everything in order to succeed in this type of scenario. I, I can't do it. I wouldn't do it. And this and this, you know, the same I feel the same way about Tom Brady, actually a lot worse about Tom Brady, which y'all know why. If y'all have seen my previous streams and whatnot, y'all know why. But but yeah, heck no to Bill Belichick. No. On, honestly if if they end up hiring Bill Belichick, I'm going to be extremely disappointed. Because it'll, it'll scream. It'll loudly scream desperation. And don't get me wrong. I want to win, too. I want to win, too. But at any and all costs, even with the chance of it impacting the integrity of the game? No. Nah. I'm not I'm not for that. I'm not for that. I don't I don't care how many accolades. Just a part of me, it's it's an honor thing. It's an honor thing. It's an honor thing. And you know, for those that disagree, that's fine. I totally get it. You know, this is just how I feel. I can only speak for myself, but I I wouldn't be cool with it. I can't say with a straight face that I'd be that I would be cool with it. I, I can't. I can't. So hopefully hopefully folks understand where I'm coming from. If not, oh well, but that's where I stand. But anyway, that's pretty much all that I have uh, for this video. I just think the main thing is gotta really start with David Tepper because I'm really not confident that he will fix things. I'm not, but we'll see. If anything, I'm just very curious to see how these remaining six games are gonna go. And even more crazy, the fact that despite being one in 10, we are still actually in the playoff hunt, which is ridiculous, but hey, I don't make these rules up. But anyway, that's pretty much all that I have for now. Uh, don't forget to check out the link in the description to Game Beauty. Uh, do some shopping for some video game themed makeup and cosmetic products. Check those out. And let me know what y'all's thoughts are. Um, how do y'all feel about the, um, the quotes from Dan Graziano and Jeremy Fowler in regards to the next steps now that Frank Reich is gone? Um, and let's talk head coaches. 
what are some head coaching candidates that you feel would be a great pickup for the Carolina Panthers? Fire away. Let me know. Okay, maybe not fire away because we just fired Frank Wright. But share. Do share. Show and tell. <laughs> and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For another Carolina Panthers talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the YouTube of the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed evening, and I will see you all in the next video. Later. Oh, and keep pounding.